just analyze these real quick to the 1.5 basic armature. This one, we can see that he's locking in this subject's head to the upper left polar point. This guy's locking into this vertical. And there's subtle diagonals in the jackets that run and parallel the sinister diagonal right here and here. This one's cool. He's locking in this vertical, which is obvious, right? Let me turn this off so you can just see it real quick. So he's definitely locking this in, but check this out. Look at how he captures and makes this a square. And then look at how he captures and captures the diagonal there, the 45 diagonal. And then he captures this funny gesture of Giacometti and with fig good figure ground relationship. That's a masterpiece right there, that's awesome. So he knows exactly what he's doing with this geometry and the dynamic symmetry. This one's an obvious reciprocal locking in. He's got this guy's hand on the upper horizontal. So this one, he's capturing all these reciprocals, which creates repetition across the image, a gamut, a limited number of directions. And if you notice, he's also capturing this guy down here with an aspect of view and good figure ground relationship, a dark figure on a light background. So he sat by and he watched this guy and he stalked him like his prey and he waited for the perfect moment, the decisive moment, to capture this guy in this small, tiny window. So that is awesome. This one's uh, one of his only cropped images, cropped pretty extensively too, but they cropped it in a way to the 1.5 rectangle, which captures this guy's reflection on the sinister diagonal right here. This runs across the horizontal, and then the body parallels this Baroque diagonal. This leg also parallels the sinister diagonal, and then this parallels the reciprocal. So he's capturing all this geometry, the decisive moment, this gesture, and he's also creating tension from the law of proximity, where this guy is not touching the water, He's not far away from the water, he's almost touching it, which creates visual tension. And that's caused by the law of proximity, another gestalt psychology principle. So this guy's arm is locking into the reciprocal. He's got his face locked into the sinister diagonal. And then he's also creating, he's echoing shapes. Let me delete this. He's got this face, and then he's got this face. So we've got the law of similarity working right there too. It's echoing shapes right there. Another nice technique. This one, I never really cared for this one. It's kind of too generic, but it's still a good photo. And he's capturing a couple things. This guy's just off center and his coat creates a triangular shape. That's an enclosure, works with the law of closure. And then he's using, it's almost got this locked into the Baroque diagonal but more importantly, he's got relatively good figure ground relationship. You can draw a line around this guy and we know what we're looking at. So you, you can see where they dodged out some lightness to give us the shape of his head a little bit better. See how it's lighter? They did that in post in the dark room, made that lighter so his, his head would pop out against the kind of busy background. So that's a good photo. This one he's mainly capturing these geometric shapes caused by the shadows. But you can also see, see we can, there's no dominant diagonal. If you notice, he's, he's got this guy on the vertical. He's also got him with good figure ground relationship. Just a small little subject, but he's paying attention to his gestalt psychology principles and his geometry. So he's got good figure ground relationship. This guy's locked into the reciprocal. And then he's capturing these square shapes right here, the square of the shadow. That's almost a perfect square. And then up here is just creating nice shapes too. This one's definitely full of geometry. He's capturing the diagonal of the railing. This lady's, the diagonal of the food tray she's carrying is locking in. This diagonal of people is locking in. These people are, are in the upper left polar point. This doorway is locking in to the horizontal and vertical. You notice how not all of them are perfectly locked in, but the concepts still carry through. We're not measuring it perfectly to the T, but the mind can still perceive these diagonals and we can still feel these 
repeating lines, the gamut. We can still see good figure grind relationship. The law of similarity, these groups, these people are grouped together because they're similar. We can see this creating its own shape. All these repeating lines here, lots of stuff going on here. And we can sense all of that. We might not be able to identify it, but we can sense all of that even without laying on the grid. When we lay on the grid is to analyze it further and we can see how he's lining it up. So a good practice is to use those grids. You can use it on your LCD to help you start seeing the geometry and then analyze it on the computer. And then eventually you can go around like Henry Cartier-Bresson who practiced this and practiced this over and over and over again. He didn't have a, an LCD to use. He just took the photos analyzed it afterwards, and then went back and kept trying to capture the geometry, the dominant diagonals, the reciprocals, all of that. But we have the advantage with technology, we can put a, a grid on our LCD to help us line it up, to help us start seeing it a lot quicker. Then we can analyze it on the computer, and then we can start capturing it without the grids on our camera if we want. If we don't have our grids, we can still know what to look for and line up the subjects to a dominant diagonal, reciprocal, or lock them into some type of geometric shape. So this one, there's a dominant diagonal in this, this baby's body. So we can see it's paralleling the Baroque diagonal. Her head's in the upper left polar point. Another thing is I call these polar points because a lot of people call them rule of thirds power points. And I don't like that term. So a polar point is just smaller rectangles can share the same diagonal and keep swirling around this point. So this is a 1.5 because it shares the same diagonal as the mother. This shares the same diagonal, so this is a 1.5 and this is a 1.5. This reciprocal here, if we raise that up, bring it across, that's a 1.5. So we get this polar point and the smaller 1.5s can spin around it. Much like you see the rectangle of the whirling squares, the phi rectangle, how the squares wrap around the polar point. It's much like that. That's why I call it a polar point and not a, it's not a power point, it's not a golden point, it's nothing that means you need to place your subject in a certain spot. It's just the geometry of it and it's a special case where these smaller rectangles share the same diagonals. That's basically it because one thing I like to emphasize is it doesn't matter where you put your subject if the background's not clear. If, if you have a bad figure ground relationship, you're, you're still gonna get a poor image because this subject's not gonna be clearly identified. That's why you can see he's got this woman centered in this one. He's not putting her on a polar point. He's making sure he's got good figure ground relationship. So if you run a line a around this lady, you can see her face is captured. Her hair is white, so it loses contrast here, but then it, picks up on the dark area, her dark shirt, and then it keeps going around. So we can clearly identify, it's a busy background, but he's making the best of it to capture her in a clear sense, in a clear way. So that's more important than trying to put your subject in a specific spot. But let's look at how her arm is paralleling this reciprocal here. See that? Her arm's paralleling. So he's capturing good figure grind relationship. I mean, it's not the best figure grind relationship, but it's, it's really good for what the background looks like. He found a, a, I call it a pocket. Find the pocket is what I call it. So he found a pocket of negative space and he placed the woman inside of it. So he did a good job there. He's capturing elements of the grid and he's also capturing a gesture. And then he's also creating a story of why does this lady have her flag around her head. So it's a very funny image and he captures it in the best way he can. And last one, we can totally see this guy's locked into the lower reciprocal here. And then these people are locked into the upper horizontal. And then he's got all this repetition of the legs coming down over the wall, which is nice. So we've got nice repetition. We've also got nice repetition down here with all the papers. So he's capturing a nice, he's even got this on the lower horizontal. So he's capturing a very nice image, designed well, and tells a story. All right, so that's it for today. Uh, let me know if you guys like this. I am trying to do a video per week, but just let me know if you guys like these type of things, if you want to see more, and if you guys want to create like a Q&A type of thing, let me know. Ask some questions down below, and I will try and do a Q&A video depending on if I get enough people going on there. So make sure you subscribe, like, it helps me out, and let me know what you think. All right, take care guys. Bye. <laughs>